Hi everyone, it's Matt from Silton Brain Hub and I'm going to take you through the anatomy of the ear in five minutes or less. Today I'm going to take you through the different parts of the ear. I'm going to show you that this is not in fact a snail inside someone's ear. Let's start with the external ear, the bit that you can see. This includes the auricle or pinna, which is made of elastic cartilage, as well as the ear canal or external acoustic meatus which is the little hole and tunnel that you put your headphones into. This tunnel starts off as cartilage and becomes bony, and it leads to the tympanic membrane or eardrum. And a cool fact about the eardrum is that if you were to give it a tattoo, the tattoo would gradually move down towards the outer ear. And this is due to a process known as lateral migration. Let's move on to the middle ear, which lies on the internal side of the tympanic membrane. Above, you can see a small diagram of the middle ear, which I'm magnifying below. The tympanic membrane is in blue, and in red, I'm drawing the tiny bones or ossicles of the middle ear. The first, the malleus, is in contact with the tympanic membrane. The incus is the second bone in the middle, and the stapes is the third bone shaped like a horseshoe. The reason we have this middle ear is to amplify the sound, because the middle ear is filled with air and the inner ear is filled with fluid and sound really struggles to get through this barrier. We also have this little tube called the eustachian tube which is very useful for whenever you're on a plane because whenever you swallow or yawn the eustachian tube opens and equalizes the pressure between the air in the ear and the atmosphere. Now let's go on to the snail. Its proper name for this part is the inner ear and it's made up of two parts embedded in a bony otic capsule. Firstly, I'm drawing the vestibular labyrinth with its semicircular canals. Each one of these three canals is arranged at a different angle. This allows them to detect movement of the head in relation to the body, and this helps us keep balance. The movement they detect is sent to the brain via the vestibular branch of cranial nerve 8, the vestibular cochlear nerve. And if you upset this vestibular labyrinth, it can cause vertigo. I'm now starting to draw the snail shell, or as it's properly called, the cochlea, which is responsible for hearing. The cochlea is a spiral of two and a half turns, inside of which are hair cells. They convert the sound received from the external and middle ear into an electrical impulse. This impulse travels along the auditory nerve, or the cochlear branch of cranial nerve 8 to our brains, specifically the superior temporal gyrus. You might have heard of cancer of the auditory nerve, and it's called an acoustic neuroma. It can present as unilateral hearing loss and tinnitus in a patient. That's all for this video folks. If you want to learn some more anatomy, then please like and subscribe Sotan Anatomy Hub on YouTube and Twitter. Thanks very much for watching. Subscribe to Sotan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.